Christian home. Okay. Never have grudges against others or lose your temper or raise your voice to anybody or call each other names or allow any sort of spitefulness. Be friends with one another and kind, forgiving each other as readily as God forgave you in Christ. Try then to imitate God as children of his that he loves and follow Christ by loving as he loved you, giving himself up in our place as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Among you there must be not even a mention of fornication or impurity of any of its forms or promiscuity. This would become the saints. There must be no coarseness or salicious, or salicious talk or jokes. All this is wrong for you. Raise your voices in thanksgiving instead. You were darkness once, but now you are light in the Lord. Be like children of light. Sing the words and tunes of the psalms and hymns when you are together and go on singing and chanting to the Lord of your hearts. But always and everywhere you are giving thanks to God, who is our Father, in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Morning, happy Sabbath. During this period of wearing masks, this one time when I'm glad I'm speaking, where I can actually not have to wear one. I invite you to open your Bible this morning to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, chapter 20. About half of all Seventh-day Adventist homes are either broken or divided, which is pretty much the way it is in society in general in the United States. Two of the Ten Commandments, the Fifth Commandment and the Seventh Commandment, speak most directly about the home. We study those two commandments this morning as we continue our series on the Ten Commandments. I presume that church pastors spend more time helping people with problems of the Fifth and Seventh Commandments than all the other eight put together then surely we're talking about something that comes close to us this morning. And as we talk about these subjects, I know it could be a sensitive one to some people who have gone through challenges in the home with marriages, failed marriages. But we need to focus today on the fact that God offers help and forgiveness for any problems that we have in our lives. And remember as we talk about these two commandments, the underlying theme of our entire series, love is the fulfilling of the law. Exodus chapter 20 and the 12th verse. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Love is honoring your father and mother. We think of the Ten Commandments as being on two tables. The first four talk about our love to God. The last six, love to man. And the first of the commandments dealing with love to man, commandment number five, is the one that says, honor your father and your mother. And with good reason. Because psychologists tell us that when the parent-child relationship begins right, then the life goes right. Freud thought he invented that thought a while back, and there it was in the Ten Commandments thousands of years ago. 
when we put first of all a right relationship between parent and child then success in life is almost inevitable notice the commandment says honor thy father and thy mother did you ever notice that emphasis on mother in the fifth commandment some people try and make the bible out to be a male chauvinist book that's because they don't understand because you see when the bible was the bible was written at a time when women were not highly respected the characters in the bible were part of their society the bible tells their story that doesn't mean that the Bible recommended this way of living. It simply tells it the way it was. If we look at the principles of Scripture from front to back, we cannot find male chauvinism. The world around Mount Sinai, where the commandments were given, had virtually no respect for women at all. A mother was for breeding purposes and work purposes almost completely. What a shock it must have been to the world under which God wrote these Ten Commandments. What a far out idea this was that woman was not to be used, but a woman was to be honored. Honor thy mother. And may I suggest just this, that if God was that much different from society back then, do not anticipate that the social mores of society today are God's principles or God's plans for our homes now. Honor thy father and thy mother. Notice the commandment again. Honor thy father and thy mother. When man was made in God's image, mankind was made male and female. Because you need both sexes to completely understand the temperament of God. You need both to help a child grow up with a proper relation to both sexes and to life. A mother and a father are two very different entities in the home. Several years ago, one of our daughters was involved in a serious car accident just about a mile down off the highway from where we live. She called me at home right away. Very fortunately, no one was hurt. It's a kind of accident that was almost a head-on collision at 65 miles an hour. Somehow my daughter had gotten distracted or something and gone into the other lane, and a van was coming down the hill, and fortunately saw her at the last second and veered off and actually scraped the vehicles, actually made contact just very slightly and just another foot over or so that could have been a tragedy so fortunately no one was hurt and when i arrived at the scene just a couple of minutes after i got that phone call i immediately began sorting out the situation you know the sheriff's department was just arriving there was witnesses to talk to to look at the damage on the vehicles you know trade insurance numbers all that kind of stuff my first words to my daughter were something like this, don't worry, we'll take care of this. And then probably about a half an hour later when Sandy came from town on the scene, her first reaction was to go straight over to our daughter, hold her tight and ask her if she was okay. Two very different reactions to a situation. But that's why you need fathers and mothers. They're very different in the place they fill in the home and with the child. Each tends to and is tempted to counteract the other. He reacts with calm and assurance. She reacts with comfort and compassion. And it's too bad when we begin to complete each other, or compete with each other, excuse me, just because we're different. You need both a father and a mother. And when we look at society today, there's a number of things happening that just cause great concern. For instance, same-sex marriages, now that they're legal now, it is estimated that there are well over 300,000 children in the United States today who are living in a household that's headed by same-sex couples. At least 300,000 children are living with just one gender for a parent. 
And then there's a problem of single parent homes. About 33%, about one third of all the children in the United States, that means about 24 million children are being raised in single parent homes. Completely opposite of God's ideal. Among those, the African American community has hit the hardest. About 72% of black children are raised in a single parent home. And of all the single parent homes that we have in the United States, about 80%, over 80%, the vast majority are single moms. No father in the home at all, as we think about Father's Day tomorrow. You need both a father and a mother in the home. That is God's ideal. A woman can no more teach a boy to be a man than a parakeet can teach a canary to sing. There's nothing on earth harder than teaching somebody else to be something that you are not. A child needs both a male and a female model to grow up whole. That's why the Ten Commandments tell us, honor thy father and thy mother. Turn with me now to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Ephesians, chapter six. Children honor their parents by obeying them. Ephesians, chapter six, the first three verses. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. The greatest honor that a child can give to a parent is to want to become like you. Did you hear about the six-year-old that climbed into the barber chair? And he said, I want a haircut just like my dad's. And don't forget the hole on top where the head comes through. <laughs> now, there's some good theology there. Number one, he wanted to be like his father. And number two, even in his weaknesses. Father, that boy of yours wants to become like you, and he won't be wise enough to copy just your strengths, but your weaknesses too. We honor our parents only if we respect age. We honor our parents when we show just as much concern and care when they become old and childish as they showed for us when we were young and childish. I feel sorry for any young person who does not respect age because however, however are they going to respect themselves when they get old. Let's go back to our commandments, back to Exodus chapter. Exodus, the 20th chapter, and the 14th verse, the seventh commandment now. Thou shalt not commit adultery. We're talking as to how love is the fulfilling of the law. You see, love makes lust lose its luster. Christianity puts the proper emphasis on sex. Adultery belittles sex. God opposes adultery because it takes that which is lovely and makes people ashamed for having done it. God opposes adultery because it takes that which is clean and makes us call it dirty. Why is it that sex stories are called dirty stories? Sex isn't dirty. God opposes adultery because it lowers the dignity of the human soul. God did not make any human being to be used by another. God opposes adultery because it takes a physical manifestation of oneness and uses it for selfish entertainment. God opposes adultery because it takes that which was meant to signify permanent commitment and uses it only for temporary feeling. God opposes adultery because it hurts you and God doesn't want you hurt. 
destroys the trust that makes a relationship work. Would you turn with me now to the book of Proverbs? Get some advice from the wise man. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6. This is a pretty uh, direct reference here that the wise man is giving. Apparently problems with the neighbor's wife didn't start in America after all. Proverbs 6. Verses 27 to 29. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that goeth in to his neighbor's wife, whosoever toucheth her shall not be innocent. And then down to verses 32 and 33. But whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul. A wound and dishonor shall he get, and his approach shall not be wiped away. Now that's a pretty graphic and definite illustration. You can't play with fire and not get burned, the wise man says. You can't play with your neighbor's wife and not be hurt, even while you think you're getting away with it. It burns something good inside of you. Now, lust is a way of thinking that leads to a way of acting. Please turn now to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And fight lust. Instead, fight for love. Well, you say, that's for me. How can I have that kind of love? Well, you can't do it on your own. You cannot generate love. You cannot love by declaration or decision alone. You can't just decide, today I'm going to go out and be more loving. Why? Because love comes from God. God is love. All love comes from God. And for extra credit today, if you read 1 John chapter 4, such a beautiful chapter on God's love for us and our love for him and our fellow man. All love comes from God. And though you cannot generate love, what you can do is reflect love. I love this quotation from Christ's Object Lessons, page 67. Quote, As you receive the Spirit of Christ, the spirit of unselfish love and labor for others, you will grow and bring forth fruit. The graces of the Spirit will ripen in your character. Your faith will increase. Your convictions will deepen. Your love be made perfect. More and more, you will reflect the likeness of Christ in all that is pure, in all that is noble, in all that is lovely. Isn't that beautiful? And as we close our worship this morning, won't you turn your life toward Jesus? Say, Lord, I want to love. I want to be more loving. I want to be an upright, moral person. Please, Lord, fill me so completely with your love that I can reflect it this week to my family.